Jessica Coates, and this evening I'm going to explain how to safely do a dermal puncture. But before we get there, I think there's some background information that you should know first. A dermal puncture is just another name for a finger stick. There's also venipunctures and radial artery punctures. But depending on what your doctor's needs are, this is going to dictate what technique is used. The idea of removing blood from the body is not a new concept. Hundreds of years ago, bloodletting was performed by local barbers in an attempt to cure disease and cancers. This barbaric practice, thankfully, has come a long way into what we know as modern phlebotomy. And phlebotomy is just a fancy word for the practice of drawing blood. Doctors rely heavily on this blood, however, to make accurate diagnosis for a patient. At the end of my presentation, you'll be able to safely perform a dermal puncture, which is an asset to the medical field. The first step when beginning a puncture of any kind is safety for yourself as well as your patient. Be sure to follow all of OSHA's regulations. Begin with washing your hands and getting informed consent from the patient while getting on your personal protection equipment like these gloves and there's also face shields available. The next step is to prepare the site and make your puncture. Start by wiping the finger with an alcohol swab, letting it air dry. While this is drying, gather your samples, your equipment, like the disposable lancets. Once you have the lancet in your hand, go ahead and stick your finger. <clears throat> Always wipe away the first drop of blood. After that, you're going to want to collect your blood and care for the patient. Use a capillary tube to collect your specimen and then cap the end. Use a 2 inch by 2 inch gauze for the patient to hold and apply pressure to the site. As a phlebotomist, you're going to want to check the site for excess bleeding. After that, you can place a bandage on it. And remember to tell the patient thank you. They are, after all, our customers. <clears throat> I have just went through the steps for successful dermal puncture, starting with safety, on through the puncture, and aftercare. Be sure to practice all safety precautions explicitly. Not following these steps carefully can contaminate the specimen and result in an improper test result that would not be beneficial to the doctor's diagnosis. Now, are there any questions? Do you need special training to draw blood? Yes. Um, after attending an accredited school and completing their curriculum and passing their exam, you can apply to take the state exam. Once um, completing that, you can then become certified. Why do you wipe away the first drop of blood? Wiping away the first drop of blood ensures that you get an accurate specimen of blood. There's tissue fluid and other you know, items in that first drop of blood. So once it's removed, you're able to get a clean specimen of blood for an accurate diagnosis. What is informed consent? Informed consent is when you go to a patient and you tell them who you are and where you're from and what you've come to do. Um, you let them know you're from the lab, you've come to draw blood from the doctor's orders. And if they tell you no, you have to leave the room because you can be charged with assault. Is that all? Thank you for your time.